Hey guys, Michael Patton, Camaro Theologian. We are going to talk about those things that I hope nobody asks. This one is uh, one of those ones that come from uh, Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 is notorious for many passages. Many, it creates all kinds of problems. But this problem is spe specific. Um, and I think it goes something like this. Uh, when men began to multiply on the earth, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and began to make wives for themselves. Um, and then it begins to say that uh, God was grieved or regretted that he had made man on the earth. And that's why the big flood comes. He regretted he made man, so he he decided to flood. Now, the, what's the problem? Why do I why do I get uncomfortable whenever I'm asked that question, or or whenever uh, I read that passage? Well, I don't really because I've got an answer. But here here's here's the problem. The problem is that God changes His mind, and that's hard that's hard to reconcile because how can God, who knows everything, come to a situation? any situation and seem to be taken aback by it and and change his mind over it and um, uh, say, you know, I regret that I've done this in anything. I mean, in, in not just that problem. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of times in the Bible where God does something like this. Uh, whenever he's uh, with Moses and Moses, he's getting ready to destroy the Israelites and Moses pleads with them and God says, get out of my way so that I might destroy them and make a nation out of you. And Moses talks him out of it because he, he was going to do something. He changed his mind. Whenever he, Jonah was going to Nineveh and God told Jonah, tell Nineveh, uh, they've got seven days. I, I'm going to destroy them. He, he had a he had a plan. He was going to destroy uh, Nineveh, and he changed his mind. So I mean, the, the Bible has this quite a bit this this dynamic relationship that God has with us that includes regret. Uh, it includes this idea of surprise that uh, that looks like surprise at least to us. Because whenever we come to a situation and we regret it, we, we didn't think this would happen. We hoped it would be different. And look at this. It, 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 look, it turned out this way. Now I'm going to have to change everything. Well, here's the deal with God. There, there's two senses in which we believe God exists. Uh, now, hang with me here because this is going to be a lot of good, hard, philosophical stuff, but it is so incredibly important for our theology, and it will stabilize us in many, many ways. God exists both transcendently and eminently. Now, if I could get my chart here, um, then th this would be great. So, Michael, put up a chart. All right, great. It's there. So, the, as you can see, there, there's two places. God has a transcendent existence above the arch and an imminent existence below the arch. Transcendent means that he's above time, space, matter, and he's in eternity. God is the only one who exists in eternity. He's the only one who will ever exist in eternity, in this eternal now place, in a place that there's no succession of moments. Isn't that crazy? I mean, just think of that. It's just, it blows your mind so much, you don't want to think about it. But it is necessary because God had to have created everything, including time, space, and matter. Otherwise, we would always be in this loop trying to ask a question, well, who created what this or who created that? And going back further and further and further uh, infinitely. Infinite regress is what we would call it. So we get to the end of that infinite regress and it stopped. And obviously it's not infinite because it stops at God. And God is the one who is timeless, spaceless, matterless. He exists transcendently. So we have a transcendent God. and But also we, we could leave him there and say there's nothing else. 
That would be a deism. We would say God is up in his transcendent existence, does not ever come down, cannot come down, uh, just, just stays up there and he creates everything out of that existence. But we don't have that. We also have this right below the arch, the imminent existence of God. God exists imminently. He exists in a uh, in a way time time bound. His relationship is there. Uh, Jesus becomes incarnate there. The Holy Spirit uh, comes down and relates to us there. You can see God's activity below the arch. He is below the arch as well. And as he is below the arch, eminently in his relationship to us, he has, and this is this is in the words of Sam Storms, I think it's great. He has decreed his own displeasure. Isn't that great? I mean, listen to that. He has decreed his own displeasure. In other words, when if you come to a passage like this, God knew he was gonna go through this because he decreed that he would go through this. He decreed that he was gonna regret making man. Why would he do that? Why would he decree something so horrible? Because he is in a true dynamic relationship to us. He is in a absolutely imminent relationship with us. He, he has to go through these things if he's truly going to come down and relate with us and to us. He has these emotions whenever he has decreed to have these emotions. He's the one who created these emotions, for goodness sake. Therefore, whenever we see these things, we know that God is, he, he already knows it, but he goes through it. He decrees, he wants to go through it. He wants to enter into that relationship with us that deeply. I mean, look at Jesus. This is the greatest illustration I think of this in the Bible. Jesus, uh, I'm not sure exactly when he knew that he was gonna go to the cross. I know it was pretty early sometime. I know it was before the cross because he, you know, he prepares his disciples and he tells them, I'm going to the cross. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to die. I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to die. They didn't understand it. But he keeps on telling them, I'm going to the cross. I'm going to die. Maybe I can put up a scripture here that, that uh, says that, um, uh, where, where he tells the disciples he is going to die. Now, think of it this way. He, he says he's going to die. And then... Um, he gets to the Garden of Gethsemane, and what does he do? He asks if this cup of suffering might change. What the heck? He knows it's not gonna change. He gets on the cross and he yells out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What do you mean? You know why he's forsaken him. You see, there's this dynamic to where God decrees and enters into real emotions. When Christ was in the garden sweating, when Christ asked for the cup to be passed for him, that was true. It was a true question, even though he knew that it could not pass from him. But he had decreed before all time that he was gonna go through that. So that's the answer to the question. God is both imminent and transcendent. And in his transcendence, he decrees to enter into true relationship with us in his imminence. And that can comfort us. That can comfort us because look at the things that he does also, um, that, no, that, are not, that are not hurtful, that are not painful. Uh, look at look at the passage in Zephaniah three seven, uh, where it says, "God will rejoice over us with with dancing and singing whenever we are saved." What does that mean? I mean, he's going to rejoice. Why are you rejoicing? I mean, what what? Why all of a sudden a, a spark of emotion whenever somebody turns to you and loves you? Why do you have real emotions at the right times? Because he has decreed to be in a real relationship with us. Isn't that 
totally awesome in every single way. So Janet Sullivan, this is for you. Janet Sullivan, this is for you. Uh, this is for you and your husband because he he was asking this as well, or maybe he was asking this to you. Uh, God has decreed to go through these things. So I hope this helps, Janet, and I hope this helps many others out there. Remember to go to the Facebook page. You can ask questions there. Um, I don't know if I can put the Facebook page up here. Maybe, I don't know. I just made the Facebook page. But go there, you can ask questions. Uh, maybe I'll answer them. It's not that hard to put these videos up, but I don't want to put too many up at a time. I mean, really, I want to put uh, 10 videos up a day. That'd be exciting. But uh, I think one video a day is the most I can do and have it uh, function okay. But I really appreciate everybody watching these videos. I really appreciate uh, you guys uh, wanting to grow in the Lord. And I, I do pray that you do. I love the Lord and I love what it means to know him more and more deeply. And I love to know what it means to share this with others. And I want you to know it because I experience those true emotions too. And the true rejoicing whenever a per another person comes to a deeper understanding of him and, and loves him more. So we'll see you next time.